So let's go ahead and get started because we got a lot to dive into today. And I want to make sure we leave plenty of time for questions and answers at the end. Uh, first thing, some housekeeping items. If you do have questions that you would like to be addressed, please put them in the Q&A area, okay, of Zoom. If you want to chat amongst yourselves, please go right ahead and use the chat. Uh, I am a one-man show today. Unfortunately, our Director of Content, Rachel Mahalko, was intending on joining me, but she has no power in Memphis, Tennessee right now, so she's unable to join us today. Uh, so I am going to be rolling by myself at the moment, which is just part of life sometimes. So Again, welcome everybody. For those that may not know me, I am Nick Galarakis, the Executive Director of the Stephen G. Cancer Foundation, which is also Elephants and Tea as well. And we are just delighted to share these results. We ran this survey uh, at the end of 2021, asking our audience and our community how they felt about Elephants and Tea and the different things that we were doing, plus asking questions uh, just in general for planning going forward. And we thought it would be beneficial to share this with the community uh, that were kind enough to take this survey, as well as share this with their own constituents as well. So let's get started. Hopefully you all uh, can see my screen at the moment. So let's move on. So the agenda for today, we are going to just do a quick overview, uh, do some over, overview of the methods used, review the quantitative data that we found, review the qualitative data that we found, uh, reactions from ENT would be myself and Rachel, uh, talk about some next steps and open it to Q&A. Uh, I would like to also, too, um, before I read this quote here, give a shout out to Dr. Jennifer Kern McCullough from Colorado State University. Uh, she was kind enough to volunteer her services to make sure that we took the bias out of a lot of our questions and was able to help helping us craft the questions for this. So thank you, uh, doctor, for that help there. So I want to kind of kick things off with a quote uh, that we received in this survey. Uh, one of the questions that we asked is, in two sentences, what you find most meaningful about your interactions with the program and content of Elephants and Tea. And this quote, I feel truly listened to and represented by Elephants and Tea and their team. Not only are they compassionate, but they are genuine and thoughtful in all the work they do as an organization to represent the cancer community. We saw a lot of these types of quotes, and I just kind of wanted to kick things off there uh, and thanking those that, that did fill this out for us. So some high level overviews for you as we dive into here before we get into all the, the nitty gritties with the, the data and things of that nature. Key takeaways, our audience is very engaged, especially last year. Our audience has expressed they feel less alone after interacting with content and programs produced by us. Feedback uh, from this was also uh, able to help us drive our content and programs, not just this year, but beyond as well. We also felt it necessary uh, to share these results with partnering organizations to help plan their own programs, uh, allowing us to look at building custom programs and content going forward in subgroups within specific uh, our specific audience, which we'll get to in a second. For events, virtual should be very strong uh, again in 2022. A lot of people are looking forward to getting back into person. Uh, obviously, there is still some hesitation with COVID, of course. Thursdays, I see Mark in the audience, him and I talk all the time about doing things on certain nights, and it was very evident that Thursdays and in the evenings are the most popular days for patient survivors uh, to, to do different things. Our caregiver audience was significantly younger than expected, so we'll dive into that. And clearly, more is still needed to be done for diversity and inclusion. Uh, so we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more as well, too. So the methods used for this survey. We emailed our Elephants and Tea audience only once, and which at the time was tw just over 2,100 emails delivered. Uh, and we converted 129 of those to complete the survey. And then we had 13 individuals fill out the survey from social media. We also incentivized the survey and picked, if people wanted to be put in a drawing, there was a question for them to put their email address. And we did a random drawing and three lucky winners won a $100 Amazon gift card. So in total, we had 142 respondents. Of those that did open up the survey, we had 100% completion rate, and the average time to complete this was in about 10 minutes. Pretty impressive. So we're going to roll through the questions here uh, and just kind of show you exactly what was said. The What we also did for this presentation is there'll be certain questions that we broke out and went a little bit deeper. So we'll explain that in a second. One thing I'd like to show here where in yellow, where it says all, this means everyone that took the survey. So from down here in the legend, that's patient survivors, that's caregivers, supportive loved ones, uh, and family members or friends. 
medical, healthcare professionals, nonprofit professionals, and other. Okay, so we'll, we'll I'll let you know who we're talking about when we throw this up here. Uh, but just just to kind of give you an idea of of how we're going to walk through this and what to look for. So first of all, this this slide does not shock me at all to a certain extent. That sixty percent of our audience, for example, was patient survivors. What was somewhat uh, impressive, I felt, was that we actually had 10% of our audience was designated as a medical professional, which was higher when we shared this with a few people already. They thought that was much higher than anticipated. So something that was pretty cool to see, um, and we definitely saw a slight uptick in supportive loved ones as well, which was pretty cool. Next question we asked, what is your gender? And this was a fascinating question for many reasons, uh, but first of all, not shocked that the majority of our audience was cisgender woman, uh, 79%, that's pretty spot on, I feel as though in the AYA community. Uh, of the seven people that said they preferred not to disclose, all of them just did not understand the question. Um, some folks did not know what cisgender meant, and that was something that we realized may need some more education around. Across all of the groups though, it was, um, pretty consistent, regardless of patient survivor, regardless of caregiver, medical professionals, et cetera, that the majority was definitely cisgender woman. Next slide, which of the following best describes you? And this was more to understand the race and ethnicity backgrounds of our audience. Again, not shocked that white or Caucasian uh, was by far the leading group here with 73%. While I'd like to see our organization continue to improve in reaching people of different backgrounds, uh, we were actually somewhat more diverse than I think I actually anticipated, 26% of folks choosing something other than white or Caucasian, which was great. Uh, with that said, still need to improve significantly in other areas. Uh, Black or African-American, I'd be lying if I wasn't disappointed in seeing only 1% of our audience was designated as Black or African-American. Uh, but one really nice surprise where our Hispanic and Latino community is definitely larger than anticipated at 8%. Something else to call out in looking at this survey, we had a lot of people fill in that they were Middle Eastern background and descent. We've actually been seeing that with some other surveys and needs assessments that we've been doing. And so that's something to consider for other organizations going forward is actually having Middle Eastern as an option here. I know some folks would say that falls under the Asian category, um, but in, it's just been interesting just to see that that's been a fill in the blank for a lot of folks. So I just wanted to, to point that out to everybody. We now take a, take a step a little further here. So instead of all, as you can see, we decided to go and actually do a little bit more deeper dive on the medical professionals and our nonprofit professionals. Um, this I'm not completely shocked by, but I just wanted to call it out that 80% of this group was white and was not very diverse in other areas as well. Um, so something that's as a whole, as a society, is something that we knew are looking at addressing going forward. Um, but again, I'm not shocked by this, knowing that the communities that we interact with the most. Patients and survivors are definitely more diverse than any other category, which was great to see. Uh, we're 10% more diverse than healthcare and nonprofit professionals. So this is specifically looking at the patient survivor population, and again, 10% more diverse, which was great to see. Now we get into the age side of things and, and understanding how old is our audience. And no one under the age of 18 filled this out, even though we are an AYA organization. Not surprised that we don't have anyone that filled this out, but at the same time, it's also just points that we need to address the A of the AYA even more. Um, not only was it no one under the age of 18, but really under the age of um, 26 was lacking as well. So from 18 to 25, only 8% of our audience was in that age range. So something to look at and look at ways that we can uh, reach that, that area a little bit more. With that said, 56% of our audience is 26 to 33 years old. 64% of our audience is 18 to 39 years old, which is great since that's a big part of the YA part of the community. Uh, and then 31% of our audience was 40 years or older. So we wanted to take a look at how does that break down based on the subgroups within our audience? Patient and survivors, 35% of our audience is 34 to 39. That is our largest group. We're gonna come back to that in a second. 48% of this group is 34 to 45 years old. What I wanna call out here is people are going to be aging out of what we call the YA very soon or they already have. 
So it's something to definitely look at the Gen Xers out there. And I know there's a few of you in the audience and thank you for your support as always. But we need to look at how we continue to support the Gen Xers since this is clearly a big part of our audience for sure. 38% of patients and survivors are 18 to 33 years old. So still a, a nice chunk of our younger uh, group of the AYAs. 9% said that they were 50 years old uh, or higher. Taking a look at the caregivers. I mentioned this in our overview. What was fascinating to see that only 50% of those that designated themselves as caregivers were 50 plus years old, which means 45% of our caregivers were 39 or younger. That was fascinating for us to look at this and, and also calls out that we need to do a deeper dive with our caregivers. Who are these caregivers? Are they co-survivors? Are they um, someone my age with a parent? Are they someone my age with a kid with cancer? What is the scenario there? So that's something that we need to look at and drill down further, because I thought that was very eye-opening to see that 45% of our caregivers were 39 or younger within the AY age space. Um, so I just wanted to call that out because I thought that was very significant for this community as a whole to really take a look at from there. Next slide, supportive loved ones, half are under the age of 40 and half are 50 years or older, reinforcing the need for potential content for younger loved ones and caregivers as well. Medical professionals and nonprofit professionals looking at the age, pretty even mix across the groups, which knowing who we interact with, that's pretty spot on, but just wanted to kind of give a, a look at that here that is pretty, so that nice pretty colors all across and spread out pretty evenly there. Uh, which I think is a good thing when we have people actually in the age of AYA treating the AYAs as well and also working with the AYAs as well. So that was very important to see. So now we're going to dive into a little bit more of how are people interacting with elephants and teeth. We got some specific demographics out of the way, showed those. Now we're going to go into how are people interacting with us, what type of content they want to hear from us, when they want to hear it, so that's, that's where we're kind of, kind of go here with this portion of the results. So this is a very busy slide, I recognize, but I just wanted to kind of showcase exactly what people are doing with Elephants and Tea the most. Um, the website and the newsletter are hopping. Very glad to see that, considering the amount of time and effort that we obviously put into that. And I tip my hat to Rachel, who's unfortunately on with us, but that's a big part of what she does day in and day out. You can see there that, everybody across all groups really focus on the website and the newsletter. The next two popular things were the magazine, which was great to see. And the healthcare professionals and nonprofit professionals all use the magazine the most. I think the big takeaway here is a lot of the magazines that we print each quarter go directly to healthcare professionals and nonprofit professionals across the country. So from there, they're handing them out to other patients and survivors in their communities. So that just also reinforces what we're doing and how we're doing it. So that's great to see. Um, the next uh, area here and, you know, Ariel, GabFest was not intended to be excluded because we had in the question. So I'll come back to that in a second. Um, the, the next area programs and events page, this surprised me uh, and was definitely something that was really good to see. Um, programs and events page was something that was launched last year and we revamped it two weeks before this survey went out. So that was great to see that that was actually um, something that people were interacting with a lot already. A um, little bit higher than some other things too, which was really cool. And thank you to Teen Cancer America for our interaction there. Uh, it was impressive to see that 50% of healthcare professionals, nonprofit professionals look at that as something for what's coming up in different events and things of that nature. Happy Hours uh, is a small group, but a mighty one. Uh, seeing how many people choosing to be a supportive loved one uh, definitely shows me that a lot of people are taking the survey and they have chosen this designation uh, and is also a patient survivor too, based on knowing the people who attend the Happy Hours. Writing Workshop, this is not something that I was shocked to see so small because we've been running them with specific uh, AYA hospitals and, and different smaller groups. So it hasn't been open necessarily to the full organization. This is great to see and something that we're going to be um, doing more going forward. And Ariel, hold that thought in the gap that stuff. I'll circle back on that at the end for sure. You threw me off, Ariel, but that's fine. And rightfully so. Okay, so 
this was also part of that same question. We wanted to break out social media separately just to kind of take a peek at social media as one slide in itself. Instagram was by far the most dominant area here. Facebook uh, was number two. But what's interesting, if you look at Facebook, nonprofit professionals love their Facebook more than anyone else, which we thought was really interesting. And they interact with us the most there. Twitter confirmed a lot of our feelings. We were just not seeing interaction with Twitter. And it's very evident that people are not interacting with us on Twitter. Um, TikTok, while it was low, this was launched. Our TikTok channel, bless Rachel's heart, being a Gen Zer, I am so lost when it comes to TikTok. And we just launched TikTok a week or two before this survey went out as well. And people were saying they were already engaging with the videos there. And we've been hearing from a lot of folks that TikTok is actually becoming a place where they're looking at our videos and reels. So we're excited for that. And that's something that we're going to continue to grow. We asked folks, do you feel Elephants and Teas stories and programs are inspiring? 95% said agree or strongly agree, which was really awesome to see that we are creating content, or I should say the writers are creating the content that are connecting with people and inspiring each other. Uh, we didn't need to break this down across any groups. This was very consistent across the board. 93% for patient survivors, 95% for caregivers and medical professionals, 84% supportive loved ones, and nonprofit professionals actually gave us 100% strongly agree or agree. So thank you all for that, for those that are out there. We asked the question, do you feel less alone facing cancer than you did before reading Elephants in Tea or joining one of our programs? This was pretty cool to see, and frankly, a little emotional to see that 86 0.62% strongly agree or agree that the stories and programs when they interact with us help them feel less alone in facing cancer. This to me was arguably the most powerful slide that we could have up here just to show that people in fact are feeling less alone. That goes exactly with our mission. And it's something that is, is we want to pay attention to. And that's why we're doing what we do. Same thing. We don't need to break this down any further. It was very consistent across the board. Um, caregivers, just to add, 95% of them said they strongly agree or agree that they felt less alone in interacting with us. So again, a theme here of looking how we can continue to support the caregivers in more ways. Do you prefer to receive the quarterly magazine? How do you, do you, do you intend to receive it? So magazines go in strong, and this, this just helps confirm it. 60% of our audience reads either the printed version, uh, excuse me, reads the printed version, either with our print and digital or print alone. And then 92% of our audience reads a, a version of the magazine, which is really cool to see. What was, what was comical a bit to see is that 6% of our audience did not know that we had a magazine. So we need to continue to making sure that people are aware of that uh, going forward too. How do you prefer to receive the quarterly magazine? We broke this down a little bit further. Our caregivers, 100% of our caregivers and nonprofit professionals said they read the magazine. Supportive loved ones uh, said 90% of them read the magazine and medical professionals uh, said 95%. So the magazine's going strong. Now the content side of things. We ask questions of the content. So we worked with our patient advisory committee and shout out to all of them for helping us craft these questions as well. On what are some potential topics that you want to see? So we came up with some, some pre-options for people to fill out. We also had a fill in the blank, which we'll get to in a second on other suggestions. What was, I thought, pretty amazing was the body issue was hands down number one, as you can see there, which was pretty impressive. Right, right with that was the PTSD and cancer. So those were our two top choices. So looking at this, December magazine at the end of the year, will be the body issue. Um, looking at PTSD and other mental health categories, our September magazine is gonna be all about mental health. So we're looking at it from that standpoint. Uh, Dear Cancer Letters, we're gonna do that again in June, going strong. Uh, so we, we were really, really pumped about that. Um, some other, other things to point out here, patients and survivors, their top three was body, PTSD, and career was actually one of the higher categories as well. So we're gonna focus on creating some content around that. For caregivers, PTSD, career, and body issue were their favorites. Medical professionals, sex and intimacy was actually their favorite. 
So it was just interesting to, to see and maybe even more to talk about the medical professionals are they looking for content to help start that conversation with their, their patients, with the people that they serve. Um, so that's something to look at further. Uh, we are fortunate that Barlow Esch writes a quarterly column in our magazine. If you haven't checked those out on sex, uh, please do so. She's wonderful at, at, at writing those. Next slide, um, these were the other suggestions. Uh, a lot of great suggestions here. And frankly, we were kicking ourselves a little bit for not including fertility in the actual questions already, but fertility came up a lot, mental health came up, then followed by long-term survivorship, end of life, and relationships in general for some other areas too. So things to look at, things to consider for other organizations creating content, these are the types of things that a lot of folks were looking at. Next questions are surrounding when to run groups. Uh, our audience is overwhelmingly East Coast dominant. So most of our, our things are gonna be focused on the East Coast time zones, followed by Central then Pacific time. The Mountainers, they're, they're, they're one of the smaller groups. You know, we actually have a couple of folks from Australia that filled this out, so thank you for that. Not quite sure what the time difference is there, um, but, but uh, thank you for that. With that said, all this was consistent across all the subgroups, so we didn't break this out any further. The next is what time of day do you prefer virtual events, hangouts, such as purgatory, happy hours, and other meetups? Uh, the evenings was, for the most part, the, the top choices followed by the early evenings. But as you can see, medical professionals overwhelmingly said afternoons. So right here, if you take a look at that. So from 12 to 4 p.m. local time. So I thought that was that was interesting to see and something to note that if folks are putting anything on for medical or healthcare professionals, afternoons is the time to do it at this time right here. As far as day of the week, uh, overall the the top top one right here in the all column uh, is Thursdays, right? No no shocker there. And the nonprofit world, we love our events on Thursdays too. That's the orange as you can see here. Uh, but again, medical professionals, their favorite was on Tuesday. So something to look at there. Uh, nonprofits, that was the second highest too. Um, the weekends and Monday were definitely the least favorite of the group there. Um, but so, so something to look at. Um, our Fridays, I always wonder if that's skewed a bit because our happy hour group is so dedicated and helping us out. Um, but I don't think this should surprise anybody with Thursday, Wednesday, and Tuesday being pretty popular. Now, thinking ahead to 2022, how likely are you to attend a virtual event in 2022? Uh, overwhelmingly said very likely and likely. This shouldn't surprise anybody. Virtual is here to stay. It just might change a little bit going forward, um, but people wanna do this more. Are you planning on attending in-person cancer events in 2022? If yes, what kind of in-person event are you most interested in? Select all that apply. The way we broke this question out was people had five options to choose from. Yes, local or regional social event, like a camp or meetup or hangout. Yes, local regional hospital supportive group informative event. Or yes, national social event, like a camp, meetup, hangout. Yes, national event, like think of events with speakers, breakouts, et cetera or no, I have the following concerns or barriers, which we'll get to those responses in a second. The majority of folks prefer the regional uh, hangouts uh, and nonprofit professionals are more interested in social events drastically than anybody else, um, which as a nonprofit professional, I would agree with that statement. Um, supportive loved ones have little interest in local events, which is right here in the pink, which I thought was fascinating to see. Uh, informative events. So they want to be there more socially for their loved ones. Um, but the social was definitely more popular on a more regional basis. But if you look at the national basis, it was pretty solid across the board for those that are interested in more of the national informative events. Um, I should mention too, when this survey went out, Delta was like just coming pretty strong. So I think that that is something as you'll see on our next slide here for those, why are you uh, going to say no on an event. COVID was overwhelmingly the concern for our patient survivors. 
um, with some other other comments as well. But again, not a surprise here. For those that are planning in-person events know that COVID is is a big thing right now. Would you like Elephants and Tea to host storytelling workshops in the form of writing, podcasting, journaling, and other multimedia content areas? The idea with this question is if we're going to do things, we should focus it around what we do well, and that's our storytelling. 77% strongly agreed or agreed with Elephants and Tea hosting storytelling workshops, which was pretty cool to see. So that's something for us to consider going forward if we want to look at doing workshops for the community as a whole. As I mentioned earlier, we're already doing writing workshops for AYA hospital programs, which has been pretty cool to see. Now we're going to get into the qualitative uh, side of things. We had a couple questions that were fill in the blank and were not required. This was pretty cool to see. Of the 142 people that filled out this question, please share in two sentences what you find most meaningful about your interactions with the programs and content of Elephants and Tea. So out of 142 people that took this, 133 filled this out which was just so cool to see. Rather than trying to show you all 133 responses, we, we broke this out into certain categories. So there were similarities across three different areas. The first being sense of belonging, feeling less alone and part of a community. The second was connecting with others in similar situations. And the third, appreciation, grateful and thankfulness for the Elephants and Tea staff. We did pull out a couple quotes here. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and read these aloud just because that's not great for a presentation, but for afterwards, anyone that wants the slides, you'll be able to see a few of those that were pretty meaningful to us. The next question that we asked, if Elephants and Tea could develop programming or content to help you feel more connected to others, what would it look like? Same thing, not required. We had 121 people fill this out of the 142. These responses vary in all sorts of different ways, but we were able to break it down into these areas. Bringing people together in person. I can't spell bringing, I just realized, so there's a G missing there. Stage four or rare cancer types. An app for elephants in tea. We heard that a lot, actually, which was interesting. Aging out of AYA. Help support us that are aging out of what, what, what is considered AYA. More regional meetups, creative workshops, child, childhood cancer groups more informative panel discussions, which we are gonna be doing in 2022, and more podcasts. The last question that we had for the survey, uh, we had 112 people fill this one out. Is there anything, any other feedback you would like to share with Elephants and Tea? And the majority of these were just showing gratitude towards our organization and our staff. So now, our, our big reactions to this. What were our big takeaways? I kind of hit on these already with the overview slide earlier, but just to kind of drill back into those. People across all groups feel less alone after interacting with elephants and tea. That's something that we're really proud of. 45% of our caregivers are under the age of 40. We need to look at doing something for this age group. That is pretty significant. Diversity is improving, but we all need to continue to do better as a community, period. I mean, there's not much else to add to that. The magazine, the website, and the newsletter continue to be extremely popular. The body issue is the most popular, and we're going to make that our December magazine. Programs and events page is more popular than anticipated. Continue to build on this. Medical professionals make 10% of our audience. And TikTok, for all those TikTokers out there, we're going to look at continuing to build that even further going forward. So our next steps, communicate with our community, which is today. Uh, implement content topics within our magazine and programs. We're already sort of doing that. Continuing to build on partnerships with more diverse organizations and promote them. Um, we're going to be doing My Life Again with Tiger Lily coming up soon. And we have some other opportunities that we're working on as well. Um, one of which, too, uh, working with our, our friend Haley Johnson at Escape on needs assessment for the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, run focus groups with different age ranges. So some of you out there, I know I've already put a bug in your ear a few months ago. We're going to circle back on that. Take a deeper dive with caregivers. Uh, that's a must. You think I've harped on that plenty of times. Strengthen what we do well and where our audience interacts with us and consider pulling back or eliminating certain tactics where we're just not getting great traction from. I think that's just 
good business in general and good for the community and supporting folks. Three goals, our big three goals for 2022, engage with people where they are, strengthen what we are doing well, and bring together the community, which if you heard, saw our announcement on social media, our friends at Young Adult Survivors United, we're doing a sleepaway camp come Labor Day weekend this year. So more to come on that at some point too. Had to throw it in there. And last, I'll leave you with this quote, the potential for a more inclusive and understanding future, the potential for hope and understanding, not just in the AYA community, but also through them and their families and friends out in the rest of society. And that was someone that filled out that question 16. Please share in two sentences what you find most meaningful about your interactions with the programs and content of Elephants and Tea. So thank you all so much. If you filled out that survey, I, I greatly appreciate it. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, what questions do folks have? Uh, if any, um, please go ahead and put them in, in the, the Q&A area. Uh, this way we can make sure we address those. While you're thinking of some questions, I'm going to go back and get the GabFest numbers for Ariel, since that was such a mistake on my part to not include that in the slide. Um, but also too, I totally didn't even include my mother's meditation class in the survey itself. So that was uh, my bad mom uh, on that one. So um, any questions for anybody, please, by all means, go ahead and, and throw them in there. I would appreciate that. And if not, you know, feel free to hop off and send me an email afterwards, nick at elephantsandtea.com, if you would like to get a copy of these results. And if you haven't seen already, next Thursday, we've, we are launching a new panel discussion series. We're going to do it bi-monthly. Uh, that's going to be on February 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern. I'll grab the link for that here in a second. Uh, so we are able to bring you some different content and different things uh, in, in general. So we're really excited for that. Any questions, folks? I feel like a teacher that if there's no questions, I must have you know, covered everything that you wanted to know about our organization or about the questions. So I will definitely hang on for a bit in case anybody does have questions in the chat. I'm gonna grab also what I just mentioned for the gap best question. I'm just gonna keep rambling. Do, 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 do. All right. For that question, do, 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 do. Gabfest was twenty four percent of the audience. For those that I did did not include that, um, so there you go. Twenty four percent of our audience that they interacted with us at Gabfest, and as well as our friends at Cactus Cancer Society. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, the Karen, the question of, of, yes, I will email a link for the recording and we'll also be hosting it on our website too. Um, but this way, anyone that registered, we will email that follow, following this as well. Um, Betty, great question. Why do you think AYAs feel they age out of AYA-ness? <laughs> That's a great way to put that question. You know, frankly, this is a definitely a deeper dive question, without a doubt. We had a long discussion, my brother and I, on Saturday about this. I think it's a combination of folks just in general from a bandwidth standpoint, a lot of organizations, they need to focus on a certain age group. And with the NCI designating it as 15 to 39 or young adults from 18 to 39, you know, once you hit a certain age, you're just kind of left in the cold unintentionally. A lot of organizations I know will go up to 45 and even older to help bridge that gap, I think, a little bit more. I think part of the just in talking with some folks and not trying to put some words in anybody's mouth too much, but from that standpoint, it's, it's hard for someone in their forties to relate to someone in their twenties, what's going on. You know, cancer is obviously the, the common variable there, but a lot of folks I think go through a lot of different things in a 20 year age difference. So I think a lot of folks we've heard from so far are looking for different support and maybe even different conversations too. So that's just something to think about. Great question, thank you. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, as I mentioned, we'll go ahead and send this out. Um, 
yes, recording will be available. We'll be emailing it out. And again, if anyone wants to email me directly, um, <laughs> Karen, thank you for admitting that. Um, my email is nick at elephants and tea. Betty, let's chat. You know, I'm always open at elephantsandtea.com uh, if you have any questions afterwards. Everybody have a great rest of your day. I uh, really appreciate it, y'all. And uh, take care.